Well, let me start by uh, stating that I'm really a very honored and pleased by the invitation to come here and speak to you. Thank you. I will be talking about climate change and water system risks. And uh, I structured the talk along the following four elements. Uh, after introduction, I will deal with water deficit droughts, then water surplus, and a few take-home messages. This is a very busy slide, so it should take much time to discuss, but uh, it comes from US EPA. Uh, warming means uh, higher water temperature, means shrinking cryosphere, that is melting glaciers and uh, less snow cover, but also changes in the process of uh, precipitation. Less solid, more liquid precipitation and more intense precipitation event at the cost of uh, uh, drizzles. There are three categories of water problems, having too little, too much, and too dirty water. All three of them can be exacerbated by climate change. Uh, the pollution problem uh, has a very important meaning in terms of uh, quality of drinking water. About one in nine people on the earth does not have access to uh, safe, clean drinking water. Moreover, a polluted pollution is related to uh, uh, droughts and floods. Even if dilution is not a solution for pollution, yet without much water, we cannot dilute wastewater. So it is important to have water for dilution. And then floods and intense precipitation uh, transport nasty substances. So quality problems, water quality problems are related to floods as well. Uh, I refer to an old paper where I was a co-author, published 10 years ago and raising a lot of interest and many citations. Changes in uh, annual runoff are likely to look as on this map. Even if there are many newer papers, yet the message that newer papers convey is very similar. Uh, in plain words, uh, dry areas may become drier and wet, wetter. So uh, it's not a good news for the belt of the Mediterranean. Uh, more water is projected for Siberia and Canada, for the north. Droughts. Well, a recent paper by Kumo et al. Uh, showed that the uh, increase of people living with uh, underwater scarcity is much stronger than increase of uh, water consumption. So uh, in the beginning of the uh, 20th century, there was just uh, 240 million people, or 14% 14 of the global population, living under water scarcity in the 2000s, in the first decade of the uh, 21st century, is 3.8 billion, which is 58%, quite a lot. Whereas water scarcity is understood here as 1,700 cubic meters per capita per year. A product of uh, EEA, European Environment Agency, shows you op changes in observed frequency and severity of meteorological droughts Red areas uh, represent changes for the worse, which means a stronger, more severe, and more frequent drought events. Now, projections for the future. Uh, projections in a 20-year return level minimum river flow and deficit volumes. Again, quite in agreement with the map that I showed you uh, start, uh, stemming from the science paper. Not a good news for much of Europe, not only the Mediterranean, but also Central Europe. 
and uh, uh, better news for, for the North, for the Scandinavian countries. Recently, we published a paper, well, mostly Chinese authors, I was also there, about uh, projected, projected changes in uh, droughts in China. It was published in the uh, Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences, and uh, the uh, left column shows you changes in uh, precipitation, second, potential evapotranspiration, and third and fourth from the left, they are changes in uh, drought indices, two different drought indices. The upper row refers to one and a half degree warming, and the lower row refers to two degree warming. Uh, to cut the long story short, I refer to the title, which uh, conveys the message that there is a large difference between uh, one and a half degree warming and two degree warming as far as uh, drought damage in China is concerned. So drought damage is likely to double if we move from one and a half to two. Quite a strong message, I think. Another paper published by Sheve uh, informs the audience that uh, there is, it's going to be a large increase of uh, global population with severe uh, decrease in water resources for a two degrees warming. And also the number of people living under absolute water scarcity, which is defined as below 500 cubic meters per capita per year, may increase by 40%, but according to some models, even more than 100%. There is a strong uh, spread of model results. Destructive water surplus, inundation and floods. Climate is responsible for flood hazards, but humans uh, drive exposure to floods and vulnerability to floods. These three elements flood hazard exposure and vulnerability, uh, contribute to flood risk. A photograph to the left shows you a recent picture from Venice where Italians suffered uh, aqua alta, but more severe than, than before. And a photograph to the right shows you the quality element of uh, floods. So a uh, sewage treatment plant underwater, terrible damage. In a recent paper, we looked into attribution of, uh, of floods. It would be too simplistic and uh, naive to say that uh, climate change, global warming is responsible for a particular flood. A different framing is needed. So the probability of accidents of a concrete flood discharge uh, would be different in two cases without climate change and with climate change due to increased anthropogenic atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations. And this was precisely the story behind the paper by, by Paul et al., uh, which uh, was a very successful, I think, uh, uh, example of attribution statement. Uh, this slide was shown today already. It illustrates that they are, they have been very many floods all over the world in the last 25 years. However, there is no gauge-based evidence for a clear, widespread, observed change in the magnitude of, of frequency of river floods. So the signal is there in, in uh, intense precipitation, but in floods, not so much because of uh, it's a multi-factor uh, variable. Nevertheless, floods uh, create a big problem. Some 800 million people worldwide are currently living in uh, flood-prone areas, and 70 million of these people are, on average, exposed to floods in every year. So uh, they are countries with, uh, uh, well, more than uh, 10 million people exposed to floods, and much more than 10 billion dollars per year on average. So most of these countries are in uh, Southeast Asia, Cambodia, Bangladesh, Myanmar. Uh, this slide comes from an old paper of mine uh, 
published with uh, Kuniyoshi Takeuchi from Japan. Flood protection depends on wealth. What we did was to divide material damage by the number of fatalities. So uh, a lower left corner of this diagram shows you that in poor countries with low G GNP uh, per caput, uh, very many people die, yet uh, the material damage is low. So if you divide the damage by the number of fatalities, it could be $20,000 per fatality. If you go up to the right corner, USA Midwest flood of uh, 1993, 400 million dollars per fatality. So this is a big difference, four orders of magnitude, 20,000 and 400 million, two extremes. Uh, we used a very rich database of a Dartmouth Flood Observatory covering the whole world, and we noted that the number of large floods of severity, more than one and a half in magnitude, above five in Europe, has been increasing. However, interannual variability is dominating. Uh, I said there is a signal in intense precipitation, and this is perhaps a very important and quite well known a uh, slide illustrating projections of intense precipitation. It is a busy uh, slide because it shows uh, sub-regions of the whole world, global coverage. Uh, the uh, message that it conveys is that the frequency of heavy precipitation or the proportion of total rainfall from intense event events will likely increase over many regions of the globe depends on a future horizon of projections and also depending on the on the emission scenario so uh, precisely for every small for every region there is a horizontal line at the level of 20 which means 20 year return value of annual maximum 24 hour precipitation and all the projections are below this 20 year uh, line, which means that uh, intense precipitation like that is likely to come more frequently, more commonly, not every 20 year on average, but perhaps every 10 or 5 or even 3. Depends on the region, on the horizon, and also on the emission scenario. Uh, there have been many papers devoted to projections of uh, flood hazard, flood risk, flood damage uh, in, well, globally and also in a continental scale. Uh, unfortunately, modeling exercises differ quite considerably, especially in some difficult areas, difficult regions. Uh, just for example, I give you a, a map created by Yukiko Hirabayashi and her colleagues that was taken in the IPCC fifth assessment report. So for most of the world, you see blue spots, which means that what used to be a 100-year flood is likely to become much more common, much more frequent. For uh, much of Europe and part of Eurasia, uh, western part of, of the uh, Russian Federation, uh, there is no increase of uh, flood hazards according to this study. But there are different studies that give you contradictory uh, messages. However, one thing is, is, is quite robust. Global exposure to 20th century 100-year flood in millions of people likely to grow. Again, this slide was shown already today. Take home messages. Just Two, uh, economic losses caused by water-related disaster, floods and droughts, have been on the rise. They are higher in absolute terms in developed countries, while fatality rates and relative economic losses expressed as a proportion of GDP are higher in developing countries. 
in, uh, and this has very grave security implications. So I borrowed a slide from IPCC special report on extremes uh, that tells you that uh, from 1970 to 2008, over 95% of natural disaster related deaths occurred in developing countries. This holds for floods and droughts. In uh, developed countries, droughts do not kill. In developing worlds, there is still hunger. And so 5% of, of fatalities are in uh, developed countries, 95% in developing countries. I think this is an important message for, for such a conference at the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. My last slide. Uh, there are several factors that may explain a per perceived increase in hydroclimatic extremes. On the one hand, higher frequency and or intensity or duration of, of the events. Duration is also important, especially as regards uh, droughts. So this is a climate uh, uh, factor. Changes in hazard, adverse changes in hazard due to climate change. But there are many other factors more related to human dimension, directly to human dimension, because climate change is also a human, human dimension, dimension, but indirectly. So there, is, there has been increased exposure of population and assets. More and more people live in unsafe areas that are flat prone. There has been a clear increase of property value people get richer. Many are still poor, but many uh, has got richer. There is a degraded awareness about natural risk due to less natural lifestyle, and there is, has been increased vulnerability. The last, uh, actually here, the last should be indeed, indeed least, because it's just a CNN effect, improved at that reporting of disasters. Wherever something happens, we have it on the news tonight. It was not the case in the past. John asked us to save some time, so I do, and thank you for attention.